Good morning, everyone. Stephen Lee here. Early this morning, the House of Representatives just passed the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package, um, which includes $1,400 stimulus payments, um, an extension of unemployment benefits, and aid for small businesses and non-for-profits. In this video, I'll be covering the following parts of the bill. Stimulus payments, child tax credit, unemployment benefits, federal minimum wage, and the timing of this bill. I'll leave a link to the actual bill, which is titled the American Rescue Plan Act, HR 1319, in the information section below. So let's get started right into number one, stimulus payments. The new proposed bill will provide eligible individuals with $1,400 stimulus payments, eligible married couples with a $2,800 payment, and each qualified dependent for a $1,400 payment. The income qualifiers are the same as the last stimulus payment, which means that for single individuals, the phase out begins if your AGI is $75,000 and above, for married couples, if your AGI is $150,000 and above. Income will be based on either 2019 or your 2020 income tax return, the most recently filed of the two. Number two is the child tax credit. Okay, the proposed bill increases the child tax credit from $2,000, which it currently is, to $3,000 per child under the age of 18. Okay, under the age of 18. The credit actually goes up to $3,600 per qualified child under the age of six. Okay, so if you're under the age of six, the child is under the age of six, so that's zero to five, the credit will be $3,600. If the child is between six and 17, the credit will be $3,000 per child. The income qualifiers will be the same as the stimulus payments. Okay, so the AGI, AGI and the income phase outs will be exactly the same. The, um, the phase out, let's see, once again begins for singles at 75,000, for married couples at 150,000, and then head of household at 112,500. So that's the beginning of the phase out. The IRS will estimate the eligible payment amount per household, divide by 12, and then issue half of that amount over a six month period starting from July 2021 to December 2021. So six months worth of advance payments. Okay. The other half of the credit can be claimed when you file your 2021 tax return. The IRS is going to set up an online portal to allow taxpayers to opt out of advance payments or provide information that would, that would actually modify the amount that they calculated. So this might actually mean if you had a new child that was born in 2021 or 2020 and you did not file your 2020 return just yet, then you can modify and update your tax profile to let them know that your ch the eligible child tax credit that you should be getting should be more than what you've uh, most recently filed, whether it's a 2019 return or 2020 return. Remember, if this is the kind of content that you're looking for, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. All right, number three is unemployment benefits. Okay, the act would move the expiration date for benefits from mid-March to August 29th. Okay, and increase the total number of weeks eligible for unemployment benefits from 50 weeks to 73 weeks. Okay, the weekly benefit will also increase from $300 to $400 per week. Number four is minimum wage. The proposed bill would bring a phased increase to the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour by the year 2025. Okay. There are indications that this part of the bill will not pass the Senate, but I'll keep you posted on that. Number five is the timing, right? The timing of this bill. Right now, this morning, it just passed the House of Representatives. It's on its way to the Senate, so it's still going to take some Senate approval and review before it's passed all the way and gets to President Joe Biden's desk. So continue to um, stay tuned to this channel, subscribe and channel notifications as I continue to update you on the progress of this new plan. Uh, until next time, I wish you a wonderful weekend and a great day. Bye.